Happy Sabbath, saints. Happy day. I am glad to be here to praise the Lord this Sabbath day. He has been good to us. He has been our God. He has walked with us. And we are glad that he always blesses us as his children. Thank you for coming. And I would want also to tell you that uh, today we, our services are going on early because we will also be able to join the great evangelism uh, campaign that is going on in town. We will do it online. So all of you are welcome. We have a series that is going to run after this one. So all of you are welcome. I am informed that there are some who were going for baptism uh, at New Life Church and they have uh, ended up here. Please, you are requested that you can be given a direction. You just walk outside here using this door so that you can get the direction so that you be baptized there. Those who are coming from other churches and they were going for baptism, please be directed. Thank you so much. Welcome. Our theme for this day, our title is saying, Sinners only hope. Meaning that a sinner would have, would have no hope. In normal circumstances, a sinner is hopeless. But there is only one chance of hope. A sinners have only one chance. Only one way that he can be able to have hope. And this is through the cross of Jesus Christ. This is what I call the sinner's only hope. And I invite you that we may be together in this as we go through a chapter of Psalm, Psalm 130. Psalm 130, we will go through the old chapter and those who have their Bibles in their hands, you can be able to open it for one reason, that there is something that you cannot get online. There is a title there written in my Bible, it is written a song of ascents in the titles. Some of your titles may have written it Song of Degrees. Some other versions could have written Pilgrim Songs or a Pilgrim Song. There are many songs. There are 15 in number, Pilgrim Songs or Song of Ascents. There are 15 in number. So just one of them you will find it written a Song of Degree or a Song of Ascent, Ascents or a Pilgrim Song. They are 15 in number. They are starting from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134. I love these songs because uh, always the Jews used to sing these songs as they were going for three major festivals which they used to attend in Jerusalem. Three major festivals that they used to attend in Jerusalem they were going there as they were singing the, the 15 songs. Maybe one of the times they would be singing Psalm 130 as they are marching to, to their festival. And these songs, always they used to sing them as they were going for the festival after the captivity in Babylon. 70 years, after the 70 years, 
in Babylon, they would be now going to worship in Jerusalem as they sing these pilgrim songs on their way. Some of the songs they would be singing as they start the journey. Some of the songs they would be singing as they enter the city. And some of the songs they sing as they're on the way leading to Jerusalem. When you look at all those songs, you will get a feeling that this song is somebody who is starting the journey, setting off. And some of the songs you'll find them, people who are settled and worshiping. This song 130 starts by saying, Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let me read up to verse 4 first before I come back. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could, un who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Let's pause from there and start again from verse 1. We will proceed and finish. From verse 1, still it says, Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. This man is somebody who is somewhere in the deep. Somebody in deep trouble. And seeing no way out. And saying, when I was seeing no way out, I cried unto you. The time I am feeling that I am in a financial crisis, I will cry unto you. The time I would feel that I have a family crisis, I will cry unto you. Out of the depths, I cried unto the Lord. Meaning that this man knows that however deep the problem might be, the prayer hearing God will be able to hear that prayer. One of the depths that we find with the psalmist here is that he is in the depth of sin. And he's saying, However deep I might be in sin, the Lord will be able to hear me. Then he says, Lord, hear my cries. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. This man is saying, I know you will hear you might be from heaven above, and I am deep somewhere. Still I know you will hear. Open your ears to hear me. Then he says in verse 3, that if you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? If God would be able to take all my sins and put them in remembrance, would I be able to stand before him? If God was interested in punishing me for my sins, do you think I could be able to stand? Definitely, I could not be able to stand. Israelites could be asking, as they are going to worship in Jerusalem, as they sing this song, that Lord, it is because of our sins that you banished us into the land of Babylon for 70 years. But even in those 70 years, we have done nothing, nothing good that we can bring as a plea before you. It is only because of your goodness that you have brought us back to the land of Jerusalem. Lord, if you were to mark the 
sins that we always do. Do you think we can be able to come and worship you? No, we cannot be able to come and worship you. This man is like what Paul is saying in Romans 7. I feel the test is coming to be the same. Romans 7 from verse 14 through 17, it's like the same test that Paul is writing to us when he says that, uh, I just want to quote it and come back, when Paul is saying that, for we know that the, Lord, the, the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. The sin that I hate, by the way, I hate committing adultery. But I find that thing which I hate, that is what I do. I hate breaking the Sabbath. But I find myself just breaking the Sabbath. I find myself hating my appearance. How I appear. How I appear. That doesn't show that I am a Christian. The way I dress but I find myself doing this. That is what Paul is saying. Then he says in verse 16, that if then I do what I will not, I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me, that does it. I am a sinner naturally and nothing I can do about it. That is why the psalmist is saying, if you were to count my sins, could I be able to stand? Then, I remember this psalmist, also David, is crying in another Psalm 51, David is crying for his sins in Psalm 51. Psalm 51 and Psalm 130 are among the seven penitent Psalms, penitential Psalms, Psalms for asking for forgiveness. And Seeing that we are unable to do anything because we are sinners by nature. David, after committing adultery and killing the husband of this woman, he comes to the Lord in Psalm 51 verse 3 and says, verse 4, sorry, verse 3, yes, verse 3. Verse 3 and says, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. David is saying, I know, I acknowledge my transgressions. When I am walking, I am always feeling like I am an adulterer. When I am walking, I am always feeling that I am a murderer. My sins are always before me. When will I forget these things? And uh, then he cries to the Lord in that manner. And in verse, same, ch same chapter, verse 11, he cries to the Lord and says, Do not cast me away 
from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. There is sometimes, sometimes you, you have gone too deep into sin and you feel very down, you feel very rejected with God until you feel that you are far from the Lord. Then David is telling the Lord that do not take your Holy Spirit from me. I am feeling your Holy Spirit is leaving me. Do not take him away from me. Then he says in the next verse, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Those who have left sinning, there is a joy that you always enjoy. There is something in, the, in, in, in your life that is always very enjoyable. This is what David is saying, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Those who are saved are relieved from several burdens. And is crying, Lord, I want to remain in your salvation. My sins are always before me, but I need this joy of salvation. Then in the next verse he says, if you do all that and restore me into salvation, verse 14, verse 13, then it says, then I will teach the transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted. Lord, the sins that I've committed are so grave, but if you can restore me, if you can confirm to me that you still love me, then I will testify that you can forgive those who commit adultery. I will testify that you can, co you can forgive murderers. If you do that to me, I will confirm to them that you do it. I will confirm to them that you are a good God, a forgiving God. God who accepts his children. And when I will tell them, because they have seen me do it and you have forgiven me, then sinners, they will be converted to you. That is why the psalm is Psalm 130, verse 3 and 4. In Psalm 130, verse 3 and 4, he says that if you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who can stand? Do you know the reason why he's saying this? That you, Lord, if you were to Make sure that every sin is punished from everyone. Do you think there is a human being who could stand? The Bible is saying that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is Romans 3.23. Again, the Bible is saying that none is righteous, not even one. None is righteous, not even one. That is why the psalmist is asking, Lord, if you were to mark my sins, could I be able to stand? Let's come closer. Please look at yourself. Look at your life. Do you think if the sins that you always commit, if they were to put be plain before us, do you think you would be able to appear in the church? And do you think it is very pleasing to God to appear before him with those sins? It is not pleasing to him. 
Because sin is hateful to God. Then he says in verse 4, sorry, before I go to verse 4, there is, there is a verse in Jeremiah 13, verse 23. Jeremiah 13, verse 23, maybe I paraphrase, it says that uh, can Ethiopian change his skin? Can a leopard Change his thought. Can a black man change his or her color to be, to be white? Is it possible? Can a leopard change the spot in its skin? It is not possible. Man cannot change his character. Man cannot change his condition. We are sinners born in sin. And it is sin in you that always makes you commit sin. But, okay, I can see that verse. Can, can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard its spot? Then you may, then may you also do good who are accustomed to do evil. Do you think you people, you are accustomed to do good? You are accustomed to do evil. And you cannot change. Then this is why the psalmist is crying and saying in verse, in 130 saying, If the Lord should mark my iniquities, or if you, O Lord, should mark my iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Then verse 4 is saying, but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. The psalmist is saying that Lord you forgive us. You are a God who forgives sin. And in you naturally there is forgiveness that you may be feared. The one who will be forgiven is the one who will see the depth of sin like David and run before the Lord that my sins are ever before me. Because you cannot change yourself. Run to the Lord and tell the Lord that my sins are ever before me. I always commit this I always commit this, but when I look at you, I see embarrassment. I am ashamed of what I always do. Because you cannot change yourself. The Lord will be able to give you his spirit that can be able to transform your life. God hates your sin, but he loves you. That, he, that is why he provides a solution, Jesus Christ, to pay for your sins. By the way, after accepting him, he justifies you. He, he pronounces you that you are righteous. By the way, you are dirty with all your sins, but he's saying that you are righteous. Then he covers you with the garb of righteousness, the cloth of Jesus Christ. And that is justification. By the way, that is your title to go to heaven. You have done nothing right. You have only asked for forgiveness. And you are entitled to go to heaven. And then when he entitles you to go to heaven, he works with you through the power of the Holy Spirit to change you from sin righteousness. That now as you walk, you find yourself character is changing. It is you, it is not you who is doing good, but it is Christ in you who is doing the good that you are doing. That is why we are saying it is Christ's righteousness. Even when you are doing good, it is Christ doing in you. 
And I love it when in verse 4 the, the psalmist is saying that Lord, I thank you that there is forgiveness in you. Your partner in the family may not forgive you. Your children may not forgive you. Your parents may not forgive you. But in the Lord, there is forgiveness. There is somebody who might have refused to forgive you. But with the Lord, there is forgiveness. Why don't you be confident to go to the Lord and tell the Lord that I am a sinner. Lord, forgive me. With you, there is forgiveness. I cannot change myself. You only need to forgive me. Then come and transform my life. Then he's saying, the reason why God is bringing to us salvation that sheep is because for the reason that he may be feared. For the reason that we may know that he is God who can do all things in our lives. Then, let me finish the other rest of the verses. Verse 5 is saying, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I do hope. This psalmist is saying, with all my problems, even my sin problems, I will wait for the Lord. And I will hope in his word. Meaning that I will hope in his promises. Then he says, My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. I think you have seen the poster. Sometimes I love communication team. They do imagine things and they do them very well. The poster that they, say, they, they put there that says, uh, sinners only hope, that poster. You can see a sinners only hope is it was darkness. Somebody is waiting for something, some light to come in the morning. Somebody is saying, I am waiting unto the Lord like the one who watches for the morning. Look for a watchman. Who watches through all the night? This man is eagerly waiting for the horizon to change the color. To see that morning is coming. They start waiting as the sun sets in the evening till dawn in the morning. They are eagerly waiting for the light of the morning. Then this man is saying, I will hope in the Lord. With all the things that I have, I have nothing I can present to the Lord. I will wait for his promises. It might be dark. Darkness might be long. But I will continue hoping till it will dawn. Then, he says, O oh Israel, Verse 7, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. They are saying, as Israel, as a nation, we can have no hope except in the Lord. If the Lord was to punish us according to our sins, we will not be able to stand. But with him, there is forgiveness. I just want to invite you that you know your sins. I want to present to you that with the Lord, there is forgiveness. You know how far you always move away from the love of God. 
But God is pleading with you that you may come closer. He has provided all the means. Your only hope is at the cross of Jesus Christ. Your only hope is the grace of the Lord. The Lord is gracious. Somebody is telling me that I have been a sinner and I want the Lord to forgive me my sins. Please, if you are such a one, please stand up. <laughs>